Thanks for listening to the Southern Star Election 2020 podcast. Don't forget to pick up this week's Southern Star for all the latest election news, including interviews with candidates, analysis and comment. Available every Thursday in shops across West Cork and online from anywhere in the world via www.southernstar.ie. The Southern Star, your go-to destination for election 2020. Welcome to the Southern Stars Election 2020 podcast, the first in a series of podcasts in the run-up to the next general election, taking a lighter look at the people and issues connected with the voting process. My name is Siobhan Cronin, I'm the news editor with the Southern Star, and joining me today in this first episode is Councillor Holly Kearns, who recently announced that she would be running in the Cork Southwest constituency in the next election. Holly, welcome to the Southern Star podcast. How's the campaign going? So far, so good. Um, Similarly to our local election campaign, I think when you're not out campaigning, it can feel disheartening. Um, When we announced our local election campaign, we were laughed at, we were told we didn't have a hope. And similarly to to this one, we're we're still not given a a real... um, People don't think we have a real shot, I suppose. But when you're out talking to people and you're on the doors, that's not the perception at all that we get. Uh, people are ready for change. Um, so it's really encouraging. The campaign's going great. We really enjoy doing that. And I suppose the, the thing that I always feel when I'm out campaigning in the, in the last two elections now is the presumption that in rural Ireland we're conservative by default is not only untrue, it's a little bit offensive. And there's one thing I love about going out and canvassing is is seeing that, you know, um, everyone's ready for change, everyone's ready for something new, and it's a great experience to be out there seeing it. And do you think the issues are slightly different now that you're on the doorsteps regarding a national campaign than when you were campaigning for the local elections? Or are the issues the same no matter what you're campaigning for? Um, I think the issues that affect people in their day-to-day life are the same but the way you can talk about it and the way you can campaign differs from local to general so one of the main reasons I became engaged in politics is um, the injustice really for the next generation in terms of the environment and at a local level it's tricky to really affect big positive change in that sense and going into a general election campaign now we can really start to talk about that and that's a big difference I suppose and um, in terms of being at the doors there's some similarities and some differences to the locals from our own perspective so um, we don't have to introduce ourselves as much people are aware of, of you know our campaign and stuff which is different but we're very much still the underdog uh, we're still in the same position so Loads of similarities, loads of differences. <laughs> but is there a danger that you might be considered the Green candidate as such? We don't have a Green Party candidate yet here. But are, are you a little bit worried you'll be just seen as Green and maybe other issues will be kind of sidestepped? Or how do you um, feel about that? I, it's so hard to know how you're seen. And um, I think I do have Green credentials and I'm proud of them. I don't see it as a negative part of our campaign. But I'm certainly not a single issue candidate. Um, I'm not a Green. I'm a Social Democrat. And... Uh, there's a lot more to social democracy than just climate action. Um, we can't take single issues on their own. We need a whole policy approach. So, I mean, in terms of, of being a social democrat and having, you know, is it the social democrat, is it the green? You know, it's, it's, it's hard to say. I think um, what we need to do is raise awareness of what the Social Democrats are and what they stand for. Well, that's exactly what I was going to ask you, because uh, it's a relatively new party, we know. It doesn't really have as high a profile as you'd expect, given the two high-profile leaders. So, like, do you feel that people know who the Social Democrats are and what they stand for when you talk to them? I think we have, in Catherine Murphy and Roisin Shortall, we have two of the most respected political figures in Ireland. They have done stellar work on exposing corruption in our country. Um, things like the, the FAI recently, 
Um, Rosine Shorthall has done stellar work in health. She led the policy on Slauncher Care, which is what we need now, real health care policy. Um, so I think sometimes it's disfamiliar until you talk for a minute and when people realise that they are leaders. No, when they hear the names. They, yeah, they're the people you want in your corner fighting for you. Yes. And I think, yeah, we part of our campaign, of course, is to try and raise more awareness of what our party stands for and what social democracy is. And I suppose what it is, is it's, it's about equal opportunity. Um, a social democratic society is one where every child has equal access to healthcare, housing, education, and the care for the care for children, care for the elderly, or state provision. Um, so I think sometimes when it's a new party and something new, people aren't sure about what it is, but that's what social democracy is. It's equal opportunity. And I think most people in Ireland are social democrats just haven't quite realised it yet. And, you know, since the centenary and everything, it really kind of brings it to light since the foundation of the state. You know, and we kind of think about what what is Ireland, what is Irishness, and what are we all about? I think that's what we are all about. Um, the homelessness crisis in Ireland now—that's not the Ireland most people know and love. And I think we're we're really starting to see a time in Irish politics where we're starting to say enough is enough, and we can't keep voting for the same thing and the same policies and expect something different to happen. And it, it's it's not somebody else's problem anymore. Um, homelessness, for example, used to be something that only affected people who, who came into bad luck or bad times in their life and addiction problems. Now homelessness is something that affects everybody in some way or another. Um, none of us are immune to it. And you know, our, our children, our grandchildren, our friends, our family can be off studying, it's all well and good, but they too could be victims of homelessness soon. You know, it's, it's gonna affect all of us. And, for me and for a lot of my generation, I'll never be able to own a home because of the knock-on effect that this has on like the, the rental market and then the um, getting buying a, a home in Ireland. Everything is affected by this and everyone. And I think that that's really starting to ring true now. Um, we've always had a dominance of civil war politics in Ireland. And that's understandable because we have this really unique history but the result now, 100 years on, is that we, the main players in our elections, were voting for two parties with identical policies with a different favourite civil war hero. And that's the reality. And if we want to see change, we have to start voting for it. And the reception I'm getting is that people are ready for that. People are ready for that change. And can I ask you too, as a young candidate, relatively young compared to the, say, average age of our probably um, general TDs in the door at the moment, are you disillusioned with the world at the moment in general? There's a lot going on at the moment, even as a climate change activist, yeah. politically, even the bushfires in Australia. I know you're involved in agriculture yourself. So do you not find the whole thing quite disillusioning? And how, how do you combat that? I think, like, globally, there's... Um this is some disillusionment going on in, in politics and in the, in the world. I think Ireland is a little beacon of hope in that. I think time and time again we've seen Ireland vote in favour of progressive politics and human rights in terms of our referendums. And if we could only just start doing that in our elections as well, I think we can see a real positive change. So I feel hopeful, along with the, the, the bit of disillusionment that you're talking about, and of course there's that too. But I think we... we what I hope for is that we start seeing a style of politics in Ireland where we vote for the next generation and not just the next election. And I think, take Cork South West as an example, things like social issues and the environment perhaps matter a lot more to us now than they did even five years ago. And the three apparent main players for the three seats in Cork South West don't represent the majority of this constituency on those social issues that we voted on. And I think there's a space there for somebody who does represent those people, that does represent that stance, you know? Right. So just getting away from all that and just a, on a lighter question, what gives you a buzz outside of politics, if anything? <laughs> if anything. Um, since moving home, so I, I left West Cork like a lot of people in 2008. I finished school in School Community College and it was like, the recession, um, 
most of us moved abroad and I was gone for eight years and there was so the more you live away from West Cork I think the more you miss it and therefore appreciate it and the things that I love about living here now I still get a buzz out of them so sounds so simple but going to the farmer's market you know everybody going into the shop meeting people you know my dog is the love of my life <laughs> anyone who follows my social media will know that so bringing her for walks in West Cork like out the Mizzen, Loch Ine, Glengarriff, there's so many places there. Probably the, the main things I get a buzz out of. Great. Well, <laughs> best, best of luck, Holly, in 2020. And thank you very much for coming in to meet us. And in the second part of our episode, we'll be talking to local Fianna Fáil TD, Margaret Murphy O'Mahony, who was elected to Leinster House for the first time in the last general election. Thanks for listening to the Southern Star Election 2020 podcast. Don't forget to pick up this week's Southern Star for all the latest election news, including interviews with candidates, analysis and comment. Available every Thursday in shops across West Cork and online from anywhere in the world via www.southernstar.ie. The Southern Star, your go-to destination for election 2020. Our second guest in this episode is Fianna Fáil TD Margaret Murphy O'Mahony, who is hoping to retain her seat in the Dáil, having first been elected in 2016. Margaret, the news this week, of course, is that the county mayor, his name has been added to the list for the Fianna Fáil ticket, and alongside yourself, so now two candidates for Fianna Fáil in Cork South West. So how do you feel about that? I think we're going to be a very strong ticket. Uh, I think there is a good chance of two seats in Cork South West, Chris and myself are friends as well as colleagues. We serve together on Cork County Council and uh, I think we have a good thing here. I think watch this space. Right. And do you think that there is room for two uh, Fianna Fáil TDs in Cork South West? This time, yes. Yes. I Just think, with the, um, the I think environment at the moment? The are in a bit of disarray and um, I know that we will work well together. Um, they there won't be huge disunity or there won't be, um, I, and I think, I, I know Chris well enough to know that um, there won't be any infighting and I think we'll just both get on with it and uh, I am very optimistic. And do you think that uh, the fact that you're both from a close enough geographical area that you're kind of leaving it open then to the likes of maybe Michael Collins down the other end of the constituency, giving him a kind of a wide open door there? I suppose geography is a, is a bit of a problem, all right, but again, um, I'm going to concentrate on the two Fianna Fáil seats. I don't mind who else gets elected, but certainly Clannacilty and Bandon are quite close, so um, there's no natural divide where there would be if there was two Fianna Fáil people from the two extremities of the constituency. But again, like we'll just have to sit down, work it out and... Um, you know, I think this could be our time for two seats here and we just have to get over the geography. We are quite close. I mean, I could walk to Clannacilty from Bandon. Mm. So it's certainly, it's not your obvious natural divide, but we'll, we'll come up with something. Okay. And you've just spent now um, your first term in Don Aaron and you've been quite high profile in a way. We often see you sitting beside the leader on the Iraqis report and that. Um, how have you found it up in Leinster House? I think it's gone well. I've, um, I'm certainly very glad to be there and still hugely honoured that the people of Cork South West gave me that chance and I hope they will again. And uh, I think I've been very productive. I think I've um, mixed national and local politics very well, certainly to the best of my ability. Um, it, it, it is all going well for me. And um, I suppose Mark Twain's quote often comes into my mind when he said, there are two, day, two great days in your life. One is when you're born and the other is when you find out why. And I have found out why. I am extremely happy, um, extremely ambitious for West Cork. And I uh, am, you know, very, very hopeful that I will be re-elected. I certainly want to be. And um, I'm very lucky. I have great family support. Uh, my husband, Paddy, and my sons, John and Philip, are 100% behind me. Um, they facilitate me a lot that I, I can just get on with things. Uh, I think it would be quite hard if you didn't have that support. So I suppose I just really want to commend them 
for um for for being so supportive and I think it's not a woman thing to have good support at home whether you're male or female you just need someone that keeps the home fires burning right because that's uh, that was actually going to be my next question about the whole work um, home life balance and it's not a gender issue because we've seen with Jim Daly saying he found it very difficult yes. and the fact you're at a disadvantage by being in a constituency that's one of the furthest away from Leinster House yes. so how do you find the travelling up and down and the logistics of it all? The the journey is very tiring and I suppose it's very hard, you can make calls and things in the car but we're so busy now that I kind of feel I have to write things down so obviously you can't do that when you're driving um, maybe the next time I might have a driver if, if, uh, if I'm promoted so <laughs> right. we'd be optimistic and I, w- I would love that for a lot of reasons uh, so it is tiring uh, I do find the hotel two nights very hard uh, I'm very busy during the day in Dublin so I haven't time to think but when I go into the hotel room it, it is quite lonely and that hasn't improved over the four right. years you know so I think that's the only drawback really yeah. to it but uh, again I think you know what you sign up to and you just you just get on with it and I suppose with phones and everything like I can mm. ring Paddy and the lads from, from the bedroom and you know and they're big so you can ring them late and you know just get filled in on their day and things but that that is quite difficult mm. but again um, difficult for a male and female uh, particularly someone in Correct. a rural constituency. Right now um, from a political point of view what are, what are the big issues do you think in this election? In, in Cork, um, South West in yeah, particular? with out of doubt, the health, right. health crisis, uh, which is disimproving every day, as you know. Um, Monday, the trolley numbers were higher than ever. Um, it's coming up an awful lot on the doors. I'm out canvassing at the moment. It's coming up an awful lot. Uh, housing. And, and I know you're a spokesperson on disability, disability. and there was a big meeting yesterday. Fine Gael yes. had a meeting on that issue. Yes, Minister McGrath um, and the Cabinet met in his constituency. Uh, now they would have wanted me met for a month to discuss all the things going on in disability. Um, part of me is a bit cynical as to why they met now. Um, part of me feels that maybe they wanted to uh, keep Minister McGrath on site for for the next formation of government. But uh, I suppose you can you can be over cynical. So I um, I welcome the fact they did meet, but it is in my mind too little, too late. This cri- it is in crisis and it has been going on for as long as as I am there and um, it's just unusual that they would meet on the eve of an election. And uh, as regards homelessness now, which is probably one of the top three national issues, are many people coming to your clinics with uh, problems as regards housing? Uh, Oh yes, it would be a huge thing and you see the figures in Cork South West are a bit deceiving in that there are a lot of houses with three and even four generations living together rather than being officially homeless or going on the streets as they would maybe in a city. So the figures are a bit deceiving, but it is huge. And like so many people living in a house, then it, you know, it can lead to mental health problems and, you know, families falling out with each other. So there's a lot of a, a domino effect and the, the figures just don't give the full picture. But there's definitely needs to be a, a better supply of housing that that's what it comes down to you know that there yes. needs to be another thing with West Cork I suppose is uh, rural Ireland seems to be forgotten everything seems to be about Bandon and there is a or about Dublin water uh, there is a big big disconnect between the thinking of of Dublin and especially West Cork and the lack of broadband the states of the road uh, we have people with no landline coverage not my mobile phone coverage and I think the lack of broadband is huge for students and for people who want to work from home and it also I think needs to be rectified so that people will set up their little small business that may employ maybe 10 people but with when there's no broadband it's very hard for people to set up and like we have very close proximity to the airport we brilliant universities on our doorstep and you know so West Cork is a great place to live to grow up to set up a business but definitely connectivity needs to be improved. Right and uh, just a final question that I'm asking everyone is what gives you a buzz outside politics and we spoke about this earlier in the week because you had your swim New Year's Day and you said you'd like to do a little bit more maybe while swimming. Yes yes so I suppose what gives me the biggest buzz that way is I love walking my dog Mm -hmm. and I do get a a big buzz out of that and I I find it 
you know, it gives me energy. But uh, as people know, I swim once a year with my party leader, Michal Martin. We do it for the lifeboat in Court McSherry. And every year I do it. This is my sixth year, I think. I Every year I come out saying, oh, I'm going to do this myself uh, because it's great fun and all that. And it's, it's not easy, but it's certainly like so invigorating and, and we we believe there are mental health benefits now absolutely. have been discovered yeah yes yeah. yeah and as i say i've only done it six times but when i each time i've come out saying god i i take on the world you know yeah so it's certainly maybe not now for the next few months i think I, I, <laughs> next few weeks i could be busy you could be canvassing at yes. that uh, <laughs> yeah. down maybe in lock in or yeah. over in sandy cove maybe <laughs> yes yeah but it's certainly one i'm going to take up great thanks very much thank Margaret. You. thank you Thanks for listening to the Southern Star Election 2020 podcast. If you enjoyed it, please make sure to rate, review and subscribe on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, Acast, Stitcher or wherever you get your podcasts.